farming's complicated and you don't just change one thing. It's usually you change one thing, which means you got to change another thing and then a third thing. And then you wrap around and find out you didn't do the first thing right. Hi, I am Greg Goodwin and I'm with the Illinois Corn Growers Association and Director of the Precision Conservation Management Program. And joined today, I am with uh, Laura Gentry with the Illinois Corn Growers Association, Director of Water Quality Research here. Um, thank you for joining Illinois Corn TV and we're going to launch right in and, and talk about um, how did PCM get started and a number of different topics around PCM. So Laura, I'm going to kick it to you. So you've been here from the beginning with PCM, got the program launched and started here in Illinois Corn. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Well, we started PCM in 2015 and we uh, really launched the program with a regional conservation partnership program grant through the NRCS. It was an award for $5.35 million and um, we wanted to start an effort, which evolved into PCM, as a response to the nutrient loss reduction strategy that came out in Illinois. It came out in 2015, and that we knew that the farmers of Illinois needed to address the non-point source pollution that was leaving fields as nitrate and phosphorus. So we started a farmer service program, but we knew that we needed to have a strong financial focus. And we knew that we would like to be able to make it very data focused to help farmers understand what they were doing and how those, you know, their their management decisions were impacting local water quality and what it was doing in terms of their financials. So tying back financials and the environmental assessment piece of it was important. We had to have data for that. And that was kind of springboard for it all. What what do you find to be the most valuable deliverable that we provide farmers every year? Um, can I can I say two things? Absolutely. Okay, but they're tied, so that's good. I think it's our specialists. I think the work that our specialists do, that one on one component that we offer, you just can't AI that stuff, man. Like you got to have the people. You can't. What is it? Some people say they're always trying to get the people out of the loop. You can't get the person out of the loop. And having a specialist there for a farmer to sit down with across the table from and have a conversation with, I think that that piece is really critical and that I think the data piece of it is really critical. I think that that's um, what makes us pretty special. And then, well, that really doesn't answer the question. The question was the deliverable. So I think... Our deliverable is when the specialist comes to the farmer to deliver the farm report, which is called the resource analysis and assessment plan, the wrap. And I think the specialist delivering the wrap, which is all the data to the farmer, is pretty important. My turn? Sure. Okay. So you've been directing the program for three years. What would you say are three of the biggest accomplishments during the time that you've been here? Boy, that's a big question. I I would say um, the expansion of our partnership with PepsiCo, really just building on the good work that had been started back, I think you have told me in the past, since 2017, um, partnering in different watersheds with different supply chain partners that um, help help um, add value along the way uh, to, to farmers and, and the commodities that are purchase that PepsiCo uses in their final projects, uh, products. Um, I believe expanding that and, 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 you know, bringing value to farmers through the incentive program to help them offset the financial risk of, of conservation adoption has been, has been a big success. Uh, we've seen that program grow now to about 400,000 acres uh, as of the end of 2024, hoping to continue to expand that, you know, moving forward. Um, I think, I think that along with the you know, simplicity of that program, as you mentioned, the importance of the conservation specialist role and how they help farmers navigate the data side of sustainability and conservation programs. I think you're spot on there and you cannot replace uh, that role in that person and the value and the consistency they bring uh, working across farmers and 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 really helping, helping them manage 
um, and learn from the data side of that. Um, I also think just um, the way in which the team continues to refine and add value to the RAT reports every year um, is really, really impressive. And again, speaking to the data side and how that how, how we're trying to add value back to the farmer and put that data back to work for them. I, I don't see other programs doing it in the way that PCM does that. Um, I think, you know, we see a lot of, and I hear this at, from farmers at, at different conferences, but uh, sort of drying in for information and starving for knowledge. And I think the RAP I love that. really breaks the data down in a way that adds value and knowledge back to the farmer about their own operation, um, comparing them to themselves in time. And so each year they, they uh, continue to participate, the greater value they have back to them. Uh, and then also, yeah, the comparisons that are drawn across farmers or, you know, um, anonymized and aggregated, but across regions in the program, I think is really valuable as well. Um, yeah, I think those are a couple of really, really solid, solid things. You asked for three, but I'm going to stop at two for now. Yep. The partners are, Pepsi's been a great partner. Yes. Um, have to add, you know, Walmart joined that partnership, obviously, back uh, in, in 2023, I believe. Um, just, I think, signaling to everybody that that was a major milestone and, and that, that major partners are bought in to the work that we are doing and, and a few other um, good conservation efforts out there across the landscape. I'll throw them out there. Stolen Water Outcomes Fund, as well as Practical Farmers of Iowa, doing similar good work out there on the landscape. Uh, as well as ADM in, in their own regenerations program, um, all programs that PepsiCo works with and 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 doing valuable things out there on the landscape. Um, but There's yeah, some good groups out there. There are, um, you know, a third one and and can't go uh, under mentioned or understated uh, in terms of the value there, but also uh, the new work we're starting with the Kentucky Distillers Association in Kentucky. Uh, that is, is also a really cool partnership, um, between both ends of the value chain directly from the farmers that are growing the corn that goes directly into Kentucky bourbon and, um, several of the companies that own distilleries in that region. Um, yeah, just a really cool partnership. Um, we're just getting that kicked off this year, uh, in 2025, uh, just hired the conservation specialist that'll support those farmers um and just a really neat neat supply chain partnership and opportunity there um really excited to see how this program pans out um but yeah another really cool accomplishment uh over the last few years here that's taken a while to get to get to this point but very well worth it i think in terms of um farmers and and challenges related to the program or related to conservation adoption um Maybe help help us all uh, help help the audience understand how we how we address some of the major challenges farmers face when they go to adopt conservation. Right. Well, farming's complicated, and you don't just change one thing. It's usually you change one thing, which means you got to change another thing, and then a third thing, and then you wrap around and find out you didn't do the first thing right. So you got to it's it's just like this cyclical, you know. Uh, cycle of changes sometimes and you're just always refining and responding refining and responding um, and then things like things change like you know your your number of acres might change or your soils you know where you know you might bring in new soils and have to adapt to that so farmers had lots on their plate and I think that it's the being able to respond to different changes in an informed way and that's why the data piece is so important and so some of the biggest challenges always are, you know, responding to markets, understanding what opportunities are available to them through different kinds of incentive programs, like a couple that you just mentioned there. Some of the NRCS programs are really great deals, but they have certain restrictions with them that you have to know about. Knowing which programs can partner or, I'm sorry, like, you know, stack with each other. Um, all of those are, are challenges. And... Um, and then also, of course, just the technical expertise um, of understanding how to get into strip tilling or how, which fields maybe would be good to start with for maybe looking at your nitrogen management. Uh, you know, maybe you could 
change your nitrogen or reduce your nitrogen application on one or two fields and see how that goes. I think those are the kind of, of challenges, um, just knowing where to start, having a good place and having a person who can navigate that with you. And that's, I think, what the specialists are so, so good at, what we try to train them to do. So that's, I think that's my answer to that. Okay, let me think. What is, what's your favorite part of this job? That is an excellent question. I want to say you're excellent co-workers. <laughs> that was definitely what I was going to say. Um, it, it is absolutely the case. Um, the, the people make the job. It is one of those things. I, I think the culture and environment we have here uh, where we've had now a staff that's the last time we lost someone was over two years ago, I think speaks to the culture and also the passion that the folks that we work with have for what we're trying to do. You know, my ex uh, education is as an engineer. And so by nature, problem solving is is kind of a part of that, something I really enjoy and am passionate about. And so working with a team that's all pulling in the same direction, trying to solve big, complex problems, I think is what really drew me into this this position to begin with. And and what I've enjoyed the most about it. And so when that's all clicking, working well, and um, you're able to sort of see that come to fruition in, in the culture of an organization, that's, it, it, get, it doesn't get a lot better than that for me. So you know, for uh, an engineer, you're really good at that kind of thing. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Um, you're good at hiring people and see, seeing how people uh, can fit in and contribute to things. I appreciate that comment. All right, I now have for you the not to be corny joke. Why do corn plants always win at karaoke night? I don't know. Well, they just have a real ear for it, but they only sing pop music. <laughs> it's awful, isn't it? Definitely corny.